it's pretty amazing to think that we are living in times where we are transitioning from a fear-based society into a love-based society. So friends, be vulnerable, be raw, be authentic. Our only job, really, is to choose love in that moment. It's all welcome here, and we bring all of us here so that you can bring all of you here. Whatever you do doesn't have to be what we did. It doesn't matter what you do. Just do something to cultivate more love and more consciousness. We came down here and we chose this life so that we could experience it. And that's the beauty about living from a conscious place is that you're present and you get to actually experience your life. I cannot stress enough. Get out there, get in nature, see the world, minimalize, let go of those things. If you don't want it, it's not serving you, let it go and watch what the universe brings to you. Welcome, Welcome home, home to, to the, the Loving, Loving Consciously, Consciously Podcast. Podcast. My name is Amaris. And my name is Eric. And if you are like us, nobody, nobody taught, taught you how to love. love. We are best friends and life partners here to vulnerably and authentically share our journey while exploring the sacred realms of love, consciousness, relationships, spirituality, and all that they encompass. The intention of this show is to help you consciously relate to yourself, others, and everything else in this universe. Together, we can embody a more intentional and fulfilling way of giving and receiving love. Loving, Loving consciously. consciously. Through eight years together, we have had the opportunity to overcome deep patterning and programming, as well as trauma related to mental health, addiction, pregnancy loss, infidelity, abuse, and immense grief. After six years of experiencing these challenges with no knowledge on how to heal or love each other, we separated. After us both spiritually awakening and recommitting, we formed our conscious partnership and have spent the last two years cultivating a divine union founded on unconditional love, devotion, and commitment to personal growth. Thank you for joining us and doing the work alongside us as we explore this beautiful world of love and consciousness to co-create a new world of love. As you courageously walk this path, remember to have grace with yourself and know that you have both the capacity to love consciously and the power to always, always choose, choose love. love. Namaste and welcome back to the Loving Consciously podcast. This is episode 34 and it's the first episode of year two. The day that you are listening to this, August 15th, is both our eight year anniversary together and the one year anniversary of the Loving Consciously podcast. We are so excited and honored and happy and all of the emotions around reaching the one year mark. That's a really big step for any podcast and we are just so excited to share this episode with you today. It's going to be very special. This is Our Love Story Part 4, which is year eight, and we're also going to honor the one year of this podcast by looking at what this first year has looked like. We're going to share some really cool facts and things about the show with you all, talk about the future of both our relationship and the show, and I want to invite and remind everyone, if you've joined us recently or you don't know why this is part four, way, way back when, a year ago, when we were completely different people, I feel like, we recorded a three-part series to launch this show. The first one was the first three years of our relationship back home in Arizona when we were monogamous and very young and innocent. And then the next three years was the first three years in Oregon when we were going through all of our exploration, still unconsciousness, but non-monogamy and partying and all the things. And then part three was for year seven alone because that was the first year after our separation when we came back together and formed our conscious partnership. And so this one is year eight. We're gonna look at this last year and all of the things. Before we get into that, some personal updates over the last two weeks. We have had two amazing guests. I cannot ask you all enough. Go listen to these episodes. Two weeks ago, we had our friend and brother Mark Gober on the show. Mark is an author and consciousness researcher and really amazing person. And we had a really profound discussion about honestly so many things. 
where we tied everything back to consciousness and really dug deep into what that means in a way that we haven't on this show before. And then last week, we had another dear friend and brother, Grant, who's known as Presence in the music scene for a first-of-its-kind episode where he performs music in the middle of the episode. And it's all about love and truth and morality and, again, bringing it all back to consciousness. So check those out. While that was going on and we weren't able to give any personal updates, we had just made it to Montana two weeks ago. We explored much of Montana. It was a very beautiful and sacred time between Glacier National Park and other sacred sites and a very sacred connection that was made there. We then went to Yellowstone off-grid for a week with our house. It was such a grounding time to catch up on our home and our life and us and all of the things. We then went to North Dakota very briefly for Theodore Roosevelt National Park. And then we came to South Dakota, where we're currently in the Black Hills area. And this place is so sacred. It's so special. I don't even have words to describe it. What's really important that we want to share with you all is we have made the decision. We have made the decision to head east and do the right half of the country on this RV journey. We're going to finish this thing out. We are going to do it in four months. So we saw the left half in nine months. Granted, the left half has 33 out of 51 of the parks. So much more on that side, much bigger states. We're getting back on the road. I mean, we're on the road and we're finishing this. We're going to keep visiting communities. We're going to keep making connections. It's not quite time to get the land yet. It's not quite time yet for that venture and there's been some changes and so we're going to keep going on this road adventure. It has been such a beautiful journey since we started this podcast and decided to leave our home and our life in Oregon, embarking on this really big journey of exploration, finding ourselves, growth, spirituality, consciousness, and everything in between. We have really evolved quite a bit on this journey, more so than I even thought we would do in a time span of a year. I feel like we've lived multiple lives and this podcast has been a passion for us to share that story and share who we have become and how we've gotten to where we're at now because it hasn't always been rainbows and butterflies. It has been deep, deep, deep work and I commend my partner here for really sticking with this podcast and this venture that we started on because it takes commitment, it takes devotion to show up on a consistent basis, share our story. Yeah, absolutely. And being really honest and authentic, thank you for that reflection. We made the decision when we started this podcast well, it was gifted to us from the universe in a download in a deep meditation. It was gifted to me, loving consciously and this podcast and all of it. We made the decision that we were doing this. Never once ever, we were talking about this today, mm -hmm. has either one of us tried to quit this in the last year. There's been times where we skipped a week because our energies were not aligned or we didn't have the capacity. But out of 52 weeks, we made it 34 or 35 of them. It's been an act of devotion, you're right, and also doing this on the road, in a trailer, oh boy. in RV parks, on beaches, during windstorms, without internet. This has been honestly such an act of patience. Sometimes it is an actual act of God getting these episodes out to you all. Not to mention, if you don't do a podcast and you're not familiar, it's a lot of work. Writing and recording and editing and posting online and then posting on social media and booking guests, managing all of the things that go into that. Each episode can be anywhere from 8 to 15 hours. It really is a lot of work. And so I reflect that back to you for sticking in this with me. You know, I, I look back at a year ago and you struggled a lot with communication mm -hmm. and speaking your truth and you have come so far and I'm just so honored and proud to be in this place. And most importantly, thank you all. There are dozens of you. It's really hard to get accurate numbers. Uh, podcast analytics are just kind of trash. <laughs> there are many of you, triple digits, that tune into this show and 
so many have reached out. We have personally been told my life has changed. And that truly to me, one person makes it worth it. And to have so many of our friends and our family and strangers and people we've met on the road and people we've met in some of their darkest times be touched by this, it's really, really magical. Oh, 100%. I mean, we, we've walked that darkness ourselves. And knowing that this podcast helps anybody, even if it's just one person, that fills up my heart. That gives me purpose. So if it wasn't clear... We are moving into year two. We're not doing seasons or anything, so this is going to be episode 34. We're just going to keep them rolling with the numbers. We did record a new, pretty refreshed intro, so if you haven't heard that, go check it out. It resets the intention of this show, and we're going to keep going. We're going to keep going into year two and year three and beyond, and this year is going to be so exciting. We're launching next week a new series called Loving Conversations, where we are inviting other people on who are in some form, not just romantic, of conscious relationship to just be really raw and vulnerable about what that looks like, how they got there, and how the heck they're making it work, because there are a million ways to do this, not just our way. I guess we can just move into the fun stuff here because it's much quicker and then we can talk about this last year of our relationship. I think that's a great idea. So looking at the first year of this podcast, and again, keeping in mind that podcast analytics are really hard. You post to an RSS feed and that blasts out to like 30, 40, 80 places we don't even really know where. And to get accurate reads on data and subscribers and downloads is pretty difficult. However, we do have some data, and there's some really cool stuff I want to share with y'all. So first and foremost, I was counting it up right before this, and a couple of countries are kind of listed as like similar things. However, we are officially played and downloaded in over 25 countries, and I just think that's so cool. Like I was reading the list today. There are a lot of countries on this list, and we know some people in these countries. We have Canada and Belgium and Iceland and Russia, Australians, the Netherlands. We have family there, France, Japan, the UK, New Zealand, Austria, Guam, Puerto Rico. I mean, it just goes on and on. And to think about that much diversity of people that are interested in love and consciousness gives me so much fuel to do this for another year. I have to be honest, y'all, and vulnerable that sometimes it feels like people don't really want to talk about love and consciousness as much as we do. And, you know, getting this in front of the right people and keeping people interested and buying into doing some really tough work, it's a big ask. And, you know, to see 25, I think 26 countries tuning into this is just, it's really cool. Yeah. And when I look at this, it gives me so much hope. It gives me so much hope for the state of humanity and where we're heading as a collective because we're seeing different countries, different communities, and be interested in a higher way of living from a heart-centered space and to choose love and to start learning how to relate consciously. I mean, it's pretty amazing to think that we are living in times where we are transitioning from a fear-based society into a love-based society. And we are actively getting to see you all tuning in and joining us from all around the world. And so we are so grateful to have you on this path with us. Thank you for doing the work and thank you for joining us. So the last two things we wanna share with you and then we're gonna get into today's real content is number one, I really want to talk about, well, really all of our episodes, but especially our episodes with our guests. And I'm going to blow through a lot of these, but I'm going to really focus in on the episodes where we interviewed people because we have had nine guests in year one. They are all profoundly beautiful, embodied, conscious friends of ours and have played a role in some way in our journey. And I would really invite and encourage you if there was anything that you listened to in our show check those episodes out because that stuff is absolute magic. 
So let's take it all the way back to the beginning here. We obviously have our trailer. We have our first three episodes are our love story. And then we moved into talking about what is loving consciously and really just laying the groundwork of this show. We have a lot of really cool episodes after that about equality, challenging and reframing views of power and authority. That one is a mind bender. Some perspectives you maybe haven't heard before. We talk about loving through change and growth, loving both realities, both the beautiful and challenging times. One of my favorite episodes that I will never stop plugging. Love like a dog. (laughs) You got it. Realizing the profound truths that dogs can teach us about embodying unconditional love. New ways of loving, welcoming and cultivating more love into your reality, loving the journey. This was just one where we just shared like a really tough time in our relationship and how we were learning to love that part of the journey, learning to love honesty, moving into embodying honesty, authenticity, and vulnerability. That one is really raw. I really invite you if honesty, either self or outward, is something that you struggle with. Eric gets really raw in that episode. Our ayahuasca journey, that was a really profound time in our life, obviously. Then we have an episode with our first guest on breath work. And then we went into our sexuality series. We had three episodes in that series, Sacred Sexuality, Love is Infinite, where we talk about ethical non-monogamy and our journey. That's actually the only episode that was entirely dedicated to that. So if you're interested in that, check that one out. And then for the love of kink, where we actually brought spirituality and consciousness to using kink and sacred kink as a healing modality for trauma. We interviewed a professional dominatrix in that one. Loving Cannabis Consciously, featuring Ryan Sprague, where we talk about bringing consciousness back into cannabis. Loving Through Addiction, that one's really simple and obvious. Receiving Love. And then one of our top favorites, it's on our website, Seeing the New World of Love, where we talked about the glimpse that we got on the Eclipse portal at Confluence Sovereignty Festival. Loving Through the Shadows. How can you return to love when you are in a really deep, painful moment of shadow, which we were when we recorded that? Love is a Sanctuary, one of our other top favorite episodes. This one was recorded after another conscious event and seeing the sanctuary land for the first time. This one is very special because it's our vision of our conscious, sovereign, and loving community sanctuary. If you want to know what we're about here at Loving Consciously, what we're building, and what this mission is, check that one out. The Divine Mother's Love, number 23 with Miss Alejandra. This one is really magical. That is a channeled work of art about how our sacred mother's love holds the key to collective healing. And if you're in this space and you're following people on social media, I know you're seeing it like crazy right now. It is time for the feminine to rise up, to be exalted, to be returned to its correct place. And that is what that episode talks about. Love's Higher Purpose is a deeply vulnerable episode where we talk about transmuting one of our core most patterns. That one's really big. Inquiring with Love with Brandon Bozarth, aka your former life coach. It's about inquiry and how asking yourself questions can help dissolve narratives in your mind. I Am Love with Charlie and Tangila. This was our first episode geared completely to consciousness, specifically the I Am Presence, One of our favorite things, the most profound thing in our journey. It's tattooed on my neck. Really encourage you to check that one out. Focus only on love. This one is about energy, intention, and attention. Devoted to love. Obviously about devotion and commitment and how we can elevate our level of commitment in relationships that humanity has currently. Number 30, cultivating loving language. We talk really profoundly in this episode about how shifting your language can radically change your life and this world because you're creating your reality with your language. Loving the unconscious consciously. This is probably one of those deeper, tougher episodes to get through. We really talk about bringing awareness to patterns before, during, and after, and especially in the before, consciously choosing to watch and allow a pattern to play out. 
So if you're really deep in your work and you're really working to transmute patterns and you would like a new perspective that I can almost guarantee you probably have never heard before, definitely check that one out. And then the two I told you about, the love of consciousness and the unknown with Mark Gober and the frequency of love with presence. And so again, calling out those guests, we have episode 13, Christopher August. We talked about breath work. Shout out to Christopher. We love him and beats in breath so much. Episode 16 with Goddess Autumn, bringing sacredness back to sexuality and kink. Episode 17 with Ryan Sprague, our dear friend and brother, a conscious cannabis coach. Bring that consciousness back to cannabis, back to its use as the sacred medicine that it is. Episode 23 with Alejandra Valenzuela about the Divine Mother. She has amazing work around all of that. Episode 24 with Rachel Veritimos, fall in love with astrology magic. And I'm realizing that somehow didn't come up in that first one. I don't know how that got missed. Rachel is an epic astrologer. This was my only solo episode of the entire first year. Go check out Rachel. 26 with Brandon Bozarth, your life coach on inquiry. 27, Tangela and Charlie with I Am Presence. And then Mark and Presence. So those were our nine guests. They're all magical. Show them some love. And that was all of our episodes in the first year. So much amazing content. It, like, I am speechless sitting over here because I remember that first night when we were sitting in our old house in Portland and all these episode downloads started just pouring in. It was like 25 in one night. Yeah. Like, literally two thirds of what you just heard, we downloaded in one night. Like, quite a bit of content. And it was just flowing. And that's how we knew. Uh, this is our calling right now. This is this is our act of service to put our story out there vulnerably and use our life experience in partnership to help others on this path. And it really has been a really big growth experience for me as an individual in learning to be more vulnerable and learning to be honest and authentic coming on here and sharing what the process has been because the process is messy and it's beautiful. So thank you for, for joining us for it. It's been such a pleasure putting this, these episodes together and having these amazing conscious individuals onto the podcast. Now we get to have conscious partners on, and that's both romantic friends, family, just conscious people coming in to talk about their relationships. Very excited to get into that. It really is so special. And the other thing that I realized I really wanted to share in this was we absolutely will not and have no intention to monetize this podcast. We will not be putting ads on here. And if in any way, any type of financial gain or anyone wanted to support this show ever came, it would be to the ministry in a completely nonprofit fashion. And so this podcast is 100% our act of service and we are dedicated and committed and devoted to keeping it that way. So the last thing we wanna share with you here before we get into our content about our relationship, year eight, buckle up, cause it's a wild ride of more life in one year than the other 31 years of my life. Yep. I really want to share some fun, interesting, and cool analytics around our content because I just think it's really interesting. And so as we just said, year one, we have 34 episodes. And what do you think our number one most performing episode is? It is episode 16, For the Love of Kink, featuring Goddess Autumn, an educational and spiritual conversation about kink as a healing modality for trauma. It's not only our number one episode, it's our number one episode by 33%. It is quite honestly shocking to me and not shocking at all that that is what people wanted to hear the most. It has been downloaded a lot and it was our first episode to hit triple digits and yeah it's just it's it really speaks to what people want to hear our second 
Number two episode is Breathe in Love with Christopher August. That breathwork episode is really high performing, nowhere near kink, but really, really high performing. Number three is Inquiring with Love. Number four is Sacred Sexuality. And number five, rounding out our top five, is Loving Cannabis Consciously. Of course, conscious cannabis, sacred sexuality, inquiry, breathwork, and kink. Like, these are really, really sacred, powerful tools. Everything is a tool. You don't have to agree with it. You don't have to use it. It's just a suggestion. It's an offering. It's a tool. Those tools may not work for you. You may not be into kink or breath work or sacred sexuality or cannabis, and that's okay. All we are doing is bringing love and consciousness to these things. It's really interesting looking at the things that people really download a lot. We can kind of see these trends and Really, after that, the top episodes are the episodes around our biggest struggles. The next one is equality, which doesn't surprise me at all. That was our most paradigm-busting episode. We really brought a new perspective. But beyond that, it's loving honesty, loving the journey, new ways of loving. These were three episodes where we were really going through it and we were really vulnerable. And it shows you, and I want to offer here, out of all of our content, obviously the, the really big ones and the guests are top five. Right under that, though, is the ones where we were the most messy, the most vulnerable in our most challenging times. Those are the episodes that people play the most. So friends, be vulnerable, be raw, be authentic. We're all human. We're all figuring this out together. We are not perfect. Our relationship is not perfect. We have wounds and patterns and slippages into old programs, and that's all right, too. Each time that we experience a pattern and experience opportunities for deeper and deeper healing, it gives us fuel. It gives us fuel to be able to help our brothers and our sisters. It helps us help you. And this podcast, for me in many ways, has been a really deep healing modality, just like some of the other ones we've talked about on our episodes, because it has truly helped alchemize a lot of these experiences. We'll sit across the table from each other here, recording these episodes for you. And much of the time, we will have just gone through a really deep pattern. And we'll sit across the table and we'll look at each other in the eye and we'll be like, okay, we're doing this. And we alchemize it in real time for you. That's what most of those episodes that came out with really raw and vulnerable experiences, they came from our our pain. They came from our choosing to identify with suffering. And by sharing that with you and returning to love through the episode, it quite literally matches the intention of this podcast, which is always to return to love. And so that's our commitment in this podcast and doing this together is returning to love first and foremost, and showing you that it's possible to do so in all these different situations. While the ego offers up for me, you know, hey, why are these patterns coming back up? Or why are we experiencing them in the moment? After the, each episode, I remember, ah, this is why. This is why. Because now we get to share it with other people and help you as you navigate those challenges in your own life. Mm. It's so true. It's really funny. We have moments in our life where we're like, this is a podcast episode, isn't it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and yeah, you know, it, it wasn't easy in the beginning, y'all. It took many times of recording and re-recording and, and, and me getting frustrated and, and walking away and you getting frustrated and not being able to communicate. Like, this has been a journey. And, you know, we also listen to our own episodes. And that's not in any way an egoic listening to what we created. It's a much of what comes out in this is is channeled, right? Like, we're just a channel for the universe to create and to express through us. And sometimes we get into flow states and we don't even remember what we said. And then we go back and listen to them. And I'll have times where I'm struggling with something or a pattern and I'll go back and listen to an episode that was related to that. Or, you know, just even remembering the good times. Like this is literally a 
digital verbal catalog of our love story and that's gonna live on forever and I'm getting emotional right now because I just realized for the very first time that this will like live on for our children too um and that's really beautiful Uh and uh, thinking about like going back to the beginning a year ago in August it's really interesting because we launched this podcast and two weeks later we bought this trailer listed our house and started selling everything we owned and that was always a dream but never the intention at that time it happened very quickly out of a big moment of conflict and frankly me just being like i'm doing this with or without you like i've reached that point i'm not gonna let fear hold me back anymore and you being like okay i'm with you and then us doing it together and so we think we're like living this one life and we're gonna do this podcast and two weeks into committing to this and launching it and making this decision we uproot our entire lives and we're going to go on the road and we're going to do all these things. The start of this was really interesting because it was like, how are we going to do this and be on the road? And we spent pretty much August to October, that two months, the first two months of this year together, just eradicating our lives, eradicating everything we owned, our home, prepping to move, remodeling this RV to make it work for us. And then we hit the road and you know, that's been a journey. We won't go through all of that again because we've shared that on this podcast. If you want to hear about all the the leaks and the beauty and everything in between and all the places we've seen and the wild experiences we've lived, definitely go back through these these beautiful creations of ours. But we made it, you know, all through California. We took it real slow and did the entire state. And then we settled in San Diego for the winter. Coming into the new year, you know, I think we were both feeling pretty lost. Like, Mm. we knew we were being called on the road, and we knew we were being called to steward land and build this community and love unconsciously, but, like, it hadn't really all solidified yet. And then we sat with Mother Aya for the first time. That was profoundly life-changing. And then we went to the Conscious Life Expo, and, you know, that comes into February, and that was i think a really pivotal moment for our partnership when i look at the last year from you know last august to now i think of three kind of really well four key times come up for me of our highs and that's our seven year anniversary trip to san diego which was the photo for year one's graphic if you've seen that graphic that's been around for a year we have a new photo for year two which is an eight year anniversary photo in yellowstone but that moment and then i think of the conscious life expo that was a really big high for us i think of confluence which was in april and then i think of high vibe when we had our moment of like ultimate devotion and you know just as we moved on this journey and we continued to push on and stay committed and devoted to both this podcast and this rv journey I really don't even know how it's been a year. Like, it's really wild to me that we've been living in this thing for a year and we've been doing this show for a year. And for me, when I look back on it, I think the most profound part of it for me is being able to alchemize everything that we've been going through and sharing that with the world. And I'm just so profoundly grateful and honored to like have a platform to share that where people want to come and hear about love and hear about consciousness because throughout this last year of journey I really don't know what we would have done without the foundation of unconditional love and without the commitment to returning to love these aren't just words we say to you they aren't just like beautiful woo-woo things like This is literally what we live by. And sometimes it feels like life or death. It feels like spiritual warfare and just holding somewhere deep in my soul, in my knowing, in my consciousness. I love you and I'm committed to coming back to love with you. Keeps me going on. Mm. Thank you so much for sharing that. I remember moving into this thing with you and just how challenging that transition was because we were really deep in our spiritual journey at that point, really focusing on being aware of our patterns and aware of kind of the opportunities for growth in each one of us. And then we were doing that in the larger house, 
where we had space to be apart from each other and to take space. And then we moved into this tiny little cube and there was no longer a place to escape or to run away and identify with old patterns. And we were quite literally forced in the most beautiful way to face everything that we had been running from for all those years that we were unconscious. And this journey has given us that opportunity to really speed up the healing process. Because when we brought conscious awareness to these patterns and then decided to live a life where we are 100% engaged in each other's experience every day, all day, it really encouraged us to support one another and push one another out of the comfortable zone. And this, this whole trip has been a journey of moving out of comfort and into growth because that's really where the magic sauce is. When we got comfortable with constantly moving and constantly changing our environment, constantly meeting new people and having new experiences and having the opportunity to tell and share our story with so many different people, it really gave me a purpose to look at myself and choose a better life because staying in one spot, it's so easy to fall into that, that same pattern, but moving around, you don't have that luxury. It's so true. And, you know, I think about us holistically over eight years, which is wild. It honestly bends my brain and my mind a little bit. And we always have been really close. We've always spent a lot of time together. I genuinely and truly did not believe we could get much closer, especially starting a conscious partnership. And for our seven year anniversary, right before we hit the road, doing a conscious commitment ceremony where we really like formed commitments and sacred, I don't even want to say vows because they weren't vows, sacred commitments to, to be in this partnership. And then we moved into this thing and I realized, oh no, you can get closer. <laughs> you can get closer, friends. <laughs> and, you know, the amount of times that we have had to rely on each other when our house is leaking or falling apart and there's a horrific storm and we don't have anywhere to stay or we are stranded on a washout on the side of a mountain with no way to turn our 42 foot trailer around. We have really made it through and we've been so resilient and I have to shout out whatever name you use for the divine, but for us, God has carried us through some wild and magical and difficult times. And, you know, if you're not familiar with our journey, what we are doing is a tour of the lower 48 states and the national parks, the official national ones. And so down here, there's 51 of them. And as of tomorrow, we've seen 34 of them. And pff, I'm trying to find the words like Every state is like its own country, truly. Mm. And we're not just like flying in and seeing one city like most people do, right? We are driving the entire state end to end, up and down, left and right, seeing all the big cities, all the parks. We've seen the entire West Coast, the Gulf Coast. We're about to see the East Coast. And that exposure to like experiences and just different ways of life and different communities and frankly nature has been such a huge part of our journey and our healing and our sacred connection that reverence for mother earth for this lifestyle requiring us to be so mindful and intentional with our resources and with how we live what we buy, what we consume, literally knowing how much every item in our home weighs because we have to be mindful of how much weight we put on our tow vehicle. And, you know, I just posted 11 months later for the first time an inside and outside tour of our trailer. If you'd like to go see that on my Instagram, that's linked in the show notes. And 
I show in that how we have managed to maintain and frankly, I think be even better about our spiritual lifestyle, our diet with being all organic and plant-based at home, our consciousness and, you know, being chemical free and organic and how I have 20 plants in here. And it really looks like a beautiful home. And I'm just so surprised, but also really proud of us for living such an intentional and minimalistic and in one with nature lifestyle. Because to be honest, moving into this thing, I had no idea how we were going to do it. Like, I remember those first few weeks, you having multiple panic attacks of like, how are we going to get water and power? Like, it was a real thing. You know, most people live their entire lives in an apartment or house or somewhere with running water and a power bill. And all you have to do is pay the bill, right? And the thing shows up in your home. You don't have to think about where is my water coming from? And is it potable? And is it going to like infect all my lines with bacteria? And you know, there's so many real things to think about. Where am I going to dump my sewage? And also being responsible for the stinky slinky is what it's called. And dumping your own sewage. And there's just so many things to think about. Like this life is wild. And so I share all of this to just say, you know, that's been such a big part of our journey as well. And being so deeply dependent on each other. And I don't mean dependent in a codependent way. I mean, if one of us is not present, we could literally crash and die. Like, you have to be consciously aware of the brakes and the braking system and the mirrors. And if certain things are done on the trailer, like, it's a serious road hazard if not. And it calls so much consciousness, this lifestyle. Like, not only in maintaining safety, but in maintaining our lifestyle and resources and all of the things. And I'm just... Now, obviously, 11 months later, we could literally live in this thing like no problem. We're freaking pros now. It used to take us like two, two and a half hours to pack up and we can do it in 30 minutes now. Yeah, this really has been a journey of shattering limiting beliefs. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. on this journey, we have seen so many different people doing it so many different ways. Anywhere from living out of a little sedan to a giant travel trailer to redesigned buses and military vehicles and we're out here in this travel trailer doing it with four dogs living a conscious lifestyle and running a podcast running a podcast and a business running businesses and bringing consciousness and love to everywhere that we go and mm. that's the other part that's brought so much hope to my experience has been the reality that this life can be really isolating. And when I say this life, I mean both the nomadic journey and that you're constantly moving around and the consciousness journey in that you're walking a path that most people haven't had the opportunity to be conscious of yet and to decide to embark on yet. And I can tell you that there are so many more of us than I could have ever have imagined in going to all these consciousness and sovereignty events, even just walking through these towns and interacting with different people, even at just an olive oil store the other day, ran across somebody who was conscious and present and... Well, no, we went into this fancy healthy olive oil store I felt really called to hand out our card which we do a lot and sometimes I am working through judgment and bias around like oh I don't perceive this person to be interested in consciousness or spirituality and so I don't give them a card and I've been called lately to start giving them to everyone we make any type of friendly connection with because who am I to say how God or the universe works and what that person is and needs and I'm learning a lot of people are closeted spiritual or closeted consciousness. Like they perceive it as taboo or people will judge them or think they're crazy. And so they don't talk about it. So we go to this olive oil store. I give this lady the card. We get in the car and I literally told you as we're pulling away what I just shared, the reflection I had. And I was like, who knows what God's going to work through this and what that woman needed to see in our podcast. And wouldn't you freaking know it? Guess who emails us today from our email on the website or on the card. I don't know where she got it and says, hey, by the way, didn't come up at 
all my husband and I are on this journey and just like it's completely aligned and now we have you know a connection and a friend in South Dakota so yeah and this has been a year of so many synchronicities just like this and it really takes us back to being led and guided by the divine that has been our experience is walking in faith and it has been so challenging sometimes because it can feel right before a big breakthrough like you're about to break that can come in so many different forms whether it's external actual like 3d the house is melting things are falling off the wall or <laughs> leaks are happening oh, um it can look like a spiritual thing where we are emotionally and mentally pushed to extremes it can look like health things we've experienced so much in this last year and sometimes we project it on each other sometimes we work through it in the moment but we always return back to love and that has been the most profound lesson for me i think in this last year has been knowing and recognizing my capacity to choose love because it's not always easy and whenever one of us does it in this partnership it automatically opens up the door for the other person and it doesn't matter how long it takes sometimes it's a week sometimes it's longer sometimes it's a couple hours sometimes it's almost immediate but the important part is really being conscious and aware when patterns come up or experiences are offered to you that our only job really is to choose love in that moment mm. so beautiful so true so simple and so friggin' hard i want to curse so bad right now <laughs> I just want to like be really honest and vulnerable and blunt with y'all for a moment because it's really interesting if you know our story and if you've listened to it and even with just what we've shared here today, we have had a rough freaking journey. Like we're not special and we are pretty unique in that we have six years of unconsciousness and then three of which were entirely partying, materialistic, infidelity, abuse, like just riddled with trauma and grief and mental health addiction, dishonesty, neurodivergence, like you freaking name it. We've been through it together. And now looking back at it, this last year was the hardest for me. Like, I'm not even going to lie right now. Really? Like, Yeah. Oh, yeah. This last year, spiritually, has pushed me so far. I am here to tell y'all a conscious relationship, which is just a relationship where two spiritual, conscious, aware, whatever you want to call it, people are in a relationship focused on growing personally and focused on growing in the relationship. Most relationships in the world exist for egoic reasons. You're attractive. I don't want to be alone. I'm codependent. I'm attached, whatever it is. I'm kids, money, status, etc., religion. For a conscious partnership, though, you're consciously choosing to be in it and make growth your priority. And that has been so hard for me. There's nowhere to run. Mm. There's nowhere to run from your shadows. There's nowhere to run from your shit or your patterns. It's a glaring mirror right in front of your face because you have two people who have agreed to not ignore that. Like I look at so many relationships, most relationships in the world, and it's just two people who have made a very unconscious subconscious agreement. We're just not gonna look at our shit. And we're just gonna like live in that comfortability and when you're in a conscious partnership, like you, you are, you can't do that. <laughs> and while we've been in a conscious partnership for two years, this last year has been the hardest because we just keep going deeper. Like the work, we say this all the time, the work never ends. You just peel back another layer and another layer and another layer and you bring more consciousness to it and you transmute something and then something else comes up and like the radical shattering of 
self, really, and of ego and of your patterns that is demanded and necessary of you to be in a conscious partnership, I will never not tell someone, like, that is really challenging work. And it is so, so rewarding because in ways that I never could have said four, five, six years ago, you are, I don't even know the phrases to use here because all of these like, you know, mainstream phrases are coming up like ride or die. But like, I literally trust you with my soul, not my life, not like, oh, you're my whole world. I trust you with my life. Like I take a bullet for you. No, like my soul and, and my spiritual path and my children's souls. And, you know, there's this just like deep, connection that comes from that and so I offer to you all as you journey on this and you move through this that is that is the reward at the end like this is not easy and for me 100% hands down this last year has been the hardest because as we've talked about a lot on this show we've noticed this paradox and pattern that like as you progress in your spiritual journey your highs will get higher and your lows will get lower it's like a rubber band going you know being stretched and yeah as that has happened like it's absolutely this hasn't been the hardest year for you i would say in many ways yes and it's been different when it was unconscious it was hard in the sense of there was a lot of suffering There was a lot of identifying with patterns and using, you know, addictive tendencies or just general escapisms to numb out and then feeling shame and experiences for that. And so that was really challenging in its own sense because it almost brought me to suicide many, many, many times. In many ways, this year has been much more challenging work in the sense of actually like working on myself but there's always been hope there's always been this this guiding Mm. purpose of i'm doing this and i'm doing this with purpose even through the most difficult times there has been this warm glow in my heart that has really guided me through that darkness that I feel like I didn't have in those in those other times. It felt pretty hopeless there for a while. While it's been really challenging, it's also been probably the most hopeful year for me because mm. it's really given me a glimpse. You know, each time we go through one of those highs, it gives me a glimpse into what this world will be. I don't say could be. I don't say might be. I say will be as we all continue to work this path and and grow and learn to love each other consciously because it's already been done. We're just living that experience right now. And like you said, as these highs get higher and these lows get lower, it's all about balance. And we came down here and we chose this life so that we could experience it. And that's the beauty about living from a conscious place is that you're present and you get to actually experience your life. How nuts is that? Mm. Most people spend their time numbing out and escaping their life. And then they wake up at 65 when they're retired and they think, where did my life go? I would much rather experience the depths and the darkness as well as the beauty and the gift that is this life all throughout and be able to say at the end of it all, hey, I lived. Mm. You touched on something so important and so true because the darkness and the struggles and the depth go deep. Like we can have days where we are like not healthy and not loving and not sleeping. It's really funny when we don't sleep in the same bed because you're on the couch over here, which is like our little pull out thing. Check out our tour video. And so like we're like three feet away from each other, but there's nowhere to go. <laughs> and a tiny little curtain in between. Yeah. But like, anyways, it just, I just, you have to laugh at it. In, in trailer life, you can't really like be separate. You know, we can go from that and just like deep, 
darkness and conflict and all I can really even say is just like not being in love to and not being like in love in that sense but like being in the frequency of love to you're right like the way we get to experience our life we live a dream it's hard it takes so much work it's exhausting imagine moving your entire house every one to five days like it is exhausting constantly changing environments weather time zones air qualities all of the things like hundreds thousands thousands of hours of driving and being in the vehicle and all that comes with this lifestyle and there are so many moments like we literally just laugh enjoy and look at each other and we're just like i can't believe this is my life we have complete freedom we have complete autonomy to experience our life to choose not to participate in the old programs in ego in paradigms in systems in the matrix whatever you want to call it all of the above we are literally creating our own life we can go wherever we want whenever we want we don't have bosses we don't have bills we don't have a mortgage we don't have property taxes we don't have rent we literally have our entire freaking house with us all the time everywhere we go there's an event a festival guess what i got my whole house you need anything we're out traveling driving pull over i'll go inside and make me lunch like i can't tell you how many times we've been at a gas station <laughs> and i go back in the house while you're getting gas and like make us lunch and i like walk out with like plates of sandwiches and food that i just made and people are sitting there pumping their gas looking at me like what the heck is happening right now but we do we get to try all of the best things we get to see all of the best places and that beauty of experiencing life with you this has been so cool i'm so glad we did it i'm so glad we did it now mm -hmm. i cannot stress enough get out there get in nature see the world minimalize let go of those things you don't need to carry around buckets of childhood stuff if you don't want it it's not serving you let it go and watch what the universe brings to you thank you all so much for being with us Thank you for giving us the space and your energy to share our love, share our story, alchemize this, to encourage you, to support you, to start and continue this revolution of love. We love you all so much and I cannot wait to see what comes of year two. We're moving on to the east half of the country and I've never been on the East Coast. I don't know anything about like much of those states. I'm very familiar with the West half of the country. And so this is going to be an interesting new experience for us. And we also just saw our ninth country together, Canada, which was really cool. And no matter how hard it is, no matter what, even when for me, every single thing in my mind and my ego and patterns and the messaging in the collective is telling me like, to give up, choose love, choose love, because it is a choice and it is conscious and you can do that. And when you do that, you radically, completely shatter anything that's not truth because love is truth, right? And so choose love, be in truth, whatever you do, doesn't have to be what we did doesn't have to be our journey, our plant medicine, whatever it is. It doesn't matter what you do. Just do something to cultivate more love and more consciousness and more awareness. Whatever that looks like for you, we support it. We save space. Whatever word you want to call the divine God, source, creator, mother, father, we don't care. It's all welcome here. And we bring all of us here so that you can bring all of you here. Thank you, thank you, thank you for being a part of the show. Thank you for listening and definitely reach out. We want to hear from you all. What content do you want to hear? What do you want to hear us talk about? What do you want to hear us cover? What guests would you like us to get on the show? Like reach out on Instagram. You can reach out to the Loving Consciously Instagram. You can reach out to me. You can email us lovingconsciously777 at gmail.com. We have a website, lovingconsciously.com type in any of them, net, org, com. We own them all. Yeah, just like connect with us, leave us reviews, reach out, tell us how the show's impacting you. We would genuinely love to hear it. I just want to say one more time, I love you all so much. And Eric, 
thank you for walking this journey with me. I know this podcast journey was a little daunting for you and the RV journey and jumping off a bridge and really, frankly, honestly, all the things we do because I'm a lot and I'm brave and I really push you outside of your comfort zone and you really push me too. I don't know anyone else. Mm. I'm getting emotional. I need a moment. I don't know anyone else in this world that could hold me in the way that you do, that could hold my insanity (laughs) and my bigness and my big dreams and my really, what is the word, like firmness and, you know, I'm just, I'm a lot, I'm a lot and you stay with such grace and patience and devotion those three words come to mind for me like your level of commitment to this partnership to this podcast to this family to this trailer to all of the things is really admirable and while I wish sometimes you would have that same level of commitment to you or working on it I do honor and save space for how much you have that with me Thank you for sharing that. That that means a lot. Thank you for being all that you are and from living from a place of authenticity and following your heart and your passion because that's what we're all meant to do here. And you're out here doing it, rocking a tiny hat while you're doing it. That's the difference between who I was before we started this journey to who I am now is that when you used to push me out of my comfort zone, I used to resent you for it (laughs) because I wasn't willing to do the work at the time. And now it's such a gift. It's such a gift to have a partner that is so devoted to not me in this physical reality, but to my soul and my higher self and living my purpose in this world, Mm. that you won't let me be in shadow. You will reflect back to me the things that I try to escape. You encourage me every day to be the highest expression of myself. I'm going to remind you of this the next time I'm reflecting something and you're biting back at me. You're never <laughs> you don't going to have live to, this down. I'm always it's on re- recording now. It's true. But I always re- reflect it back. I'm like, it's always funny because in times of heated conflict, there will be moments where I'm like, I know I'm doing this thing. And I know I should be grateful. But right now I'm just feeling this emotion and it needs to come out. That's exactly what you say. It's really funny. And that's, that's the moment I instantly just back off. And I'm like, all right, he knows he's doing it. It's fine. You just, as long as it's consciously aware and you know you're doing it, like we're cool. Yeah. And that that's the beauty about reflecting things back to your partner is that you just have to kind of hold up the mirror and then it's up to them to do the rest of the work. Thank you so much for really pioneering this vision and having the courage to dive headfirst into all of it. Because had it not been for your courage, I don't know that we would be here in this moment, at least not nearly as quickly as we have been. Thank you for all that you are and all that you bring. Thank you for your devotion to this mission, to everybody listening, this this human across the table from me. Their entire existence is focused on bringing more love and more consciousness to this world. And I can't think of a better soul to be on this journey with. So thank you. I'm kind of just like a sobbing, crying mess right now because it was really beautiful And um, thank you for that. I received that. And, you know, as someone whose family consistently reminds me that they do not approve of my life and my choices, to have you reflect that back means more than you know, because it's the truth. My entire life is dedicated to love and consciousness and community and service. 
from this podcast to our community because loving consciously isn't just a podcast y'all again check out our website it's a community it's a network it's so many things that it's becoming and loving with grace my ministry and the prison ministry and that podcast which is launching this week as well it really is like everything that i do is just from love and devotion and trying to bring more love into this world and there's one thing that i've learned and i will leave you all with tonight on this journey it's that i think i'm just gonna leave the dog shake this time i can't even begin to tell y'all how many dog shakes dog barks dog farts dog i don't even know what pitter patters on the floor we have edited out of this podcast and i think this episode is just gonna be what it is because this is year eight, you know, doing a podcast in an RV in the middle of saying something really beautiful and brilliant, and the dog comes right up by the mic and shakes and drinks water. I don't even remember what I was saying. Well, we're back. We paused. The Duke is in my lap, and I cannot remember what I was saying. It was really profound, and here we are. This is reality. This is authenticity, y'all. This is as real and authentic as it gets. And, you know, it just is what it is. So, since I can't remember the one thing that I've learned that I was about to share, I will leave you all with something, I don't know, really personal and cool. I feel like we never really, like, get to share. You know, we talk about, like, our patterns and consciousness and our conflicts, but, like, we don't really get to share, like, just the normal stuff of our life. We have a love fern, and we cannot end this episode without talking about this love fern Mm. because... We got, on our one-year anniversary, when we moved into our first apartment together, we got a little tiny, I think it was like a four-inch black plastic, like $5 fern. It was like a couple inches tall. And it was our love fern. And seven years later, we still have this love fern. I will definitely post the love fern right after I post this episode on my social media. And it's huge. And through so many things in our relationship, this love fern has almost not made it a couple times because we were in really dark times and it was neglected and not watered or left in a dark room abandoned because we just couldn't care. And the other night we were, re- I was repotting him into a bigger pot. We call him Fernie or Fernie Sanders or Feel the Fern or Ferntastic. He has a lot of nicknames. And now he's just like luscious i mean he's like two feet tall and what is that like four feet wide i mean he's just massive and i scanned him with a little like ai plant app and fun fact he's not a fern he's an asparagus fern but not an actual fern he's asparagus's cousin and guess what he's the symbol of eternity and pure friendship and he is quite literally one of the most eternal and unkillable house plants he will be passed on to our children as long as we take care of him. And I'm looking at this fern. It's always been with us. It's always been a staple of our home. It's always been a part of our relationship. And now we know so much about it, but that it's the symbol of eternity and of pure friendship. And if I had to summarize us and conscious relating in this last year, year eight, or would it have been year seven going into year eight? You know what I mean? It would be that that this is founded on pure friendship and eternity, and this is what it is. We say sometimes on the show, like, we think we're twin flames, and, you know, I think a lot of words like soulmates and twin flames are misunderstood and thrown around a lot, but from our perspective, like, that is being the other person's true and complete soul half, and I see so much how that is potentially true here and how much we so deeply complete each other and fit in to each other's lives and souls and soul missions and strengths and weaknesses and everything in between and to have someone who is here with me for eternity not even just in this physical realm not just in this lifetime and who's so aligned in values and mission and commitment and devotion and love is such a blessing and if you're out there listening to this and you have someone in your life do the work 
do the work to cultivate that, do the work to honor that for yourself, for the future generations, for that person, because this is really hard work and they deserve that. You deserve that. Love deserves that. So do the work. And if you're out there listening to this and you don't have that, do the work for you and for that future person. Imagine if you ferociously worked on yourself preparing for that and preparing for you to be your highest self, where you're going to be, you're going to skip probably seven years that we had to go through the hard way. And that was our journey, right? We did that so that we could come on here and teach other people. I share all of this as always to encourage you all to choose love and to do the work and to keep going. Don't give up. Keep going. I know it's hard. I know choosing love is hard. I know consciousness is hard. I know all of these things we talk about are hard. There are some days I just feel like I'm going to incinerate and scream and I can't go any farther. And then I just love you more and we do it all over again. Mm. Thank you for sharing that. Friendship has always been the foundation of this partnership. And I truly believe that that's the case for any conscious relationship is a deep, deep rooted friendship. Because when you have that friendship, it doesn't matter if there's a conflict in the romantic part of the relationship or in the business end of things or insert whatever experience you may be having a challenge with in that conscious relationship, when you have a foundation of strong friendship, that can get you through anything. Work to cultivate those friendships in your life. Keep your friends close. Be vulnerable. And always choose love. Thank you so much for joining us. It's been such a pleasure creating this podcast with and for you. We look forward to year two, and we love you so much.